Today, I'm gonna to talk about the different ways we can hold the cross fader. I reckon there's five key techniques to holding the fader, and I'm gonna share them with you today. This is not a hamster versus regular cross fader type vid. All of these techniques work with both hamster and regular. So try to focus on the idea behind the technique, not whether or not this is regular or hamster. Bear in mind there are no right or wrong techniques here. If you know all of them, you can add more variation into your cutting and be more versatile, which is what we all want to aim for at the end of the day. This is probably how any normal person would approach a crossfader. You just hold the crossfader like you would a pen or anything, I guess. There's nothing wrong with this style of holding the fader, although I will say this, it's quite labor intensive. It's hard to not use your whole arm once you start going faster. The fact that you're essentially holding it constantly does mean that your movements can be very controlled, however. So I guess there's like a spectrum of control versus speed uh, with all these techniques, and this one is much more on the controlled side. This way of holding the fader can be really useful if your cross fader isn't optimal. For example, if it's got a long cutting time or a really fat fader cap, something like that, you might have to end up utilizing this technique a bit to kind of force your scratching slightly if that makes sense. This is a much more efficient way of getting those much needed clicks. And what you gain in efficiency and speed, you might lose a little bit in control. It can be harder to separate out your clicks as it all kind of becomes one movement. You essentially use your thumb as a spring to keep the fader in a certain position. Depending if you're doing it regular or hamster, that would be open or closed. You then drag your index and middle fingers across the fader again to create those much needed clicks. The sound you get from the twiddle style will be slightly different than other ways of holding the fader too, which is a good thing. As I mentioned before, learning all the different ways of holding the fader can give you more options and create different sounds. The potential drawback of the twiddle style is that it might not work as well on all faders. It can be difficult if you've got a fatty Mumbai fader cap or a fader with a long cutting time, for example. Crabs are essentially just the same as twiddle style, except you add in more fingers. I actually did a full video on crabs that you can see up here, and I'll link to it at the end of the video as well. If you're enjoying this video, guys, please don't forget to drop a like. It costs you nothing, and it really does help with getting this video seen by more people. So this is my favorite way of controlling the fader. It's kind of a combination of wrist style and twiddle style and I'd say it has the good balance of being efficient whilst also providing a nice level of control. Again, we use our thumb as a spring, but instead of raking our fingers across the fader like we do a twiddle, we hit it open with either our pointer or middle fingers, or even both at the same time. This kind of turns the fader into sort of button that you can press, at least that's how I think about it, and that's super useful for transformers and things like that. <laughs> Equally, once you've got the timing down, this technique is just as useful for open fader scratches like one and two click flares. You can really get some decent speed going and it's not too tiring. You're essentially using your fingers and not your whole arm, so it's more efficient. The last technique is for eaters. I guess that's how you say it anyway. Um, if you know what this stands for, drop a comment. Uh, it's an acronym. Uh, but it's a little bit too risky for me to say in this video. I don't want to get demonetized. So yeah, drop it in the comments and I'll let you know if you know if it's right or not. So I actually can't do this technique. A DJ who does use it and obviously uses it to great effect is DJ Rafiq. It's essentially the same as the pincer style, except you're alternating between your pointer and middle fingers when tapping. You're not raking them across the fader like you are when you're doing a twiddle. You're doing it in a much more controlled way where you're tapping them. When I do this, I don't really get much benefit from doing it, but that's probably because I've not really practiced it much. But it supposedly helps you get more speed versus when you're only doing pincer style. I guess it's the ultimate combination of all the fader techniques as it seems to combine elements of pincer and also twiddle style. <laughs> They're all of the fader techniques that I personally know about. I'm sure there's more, and if you know about any, please drop them in the comments below. The last thing I'd like you to do is click either here or here. This one's how to crab, and this one is different fader techniques in super slow motion. Peace and carrots, y'all.